Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary of Health, Wellness and Family Development, Dr. Agatha Carrington, addresses the media. In the area of research, um, you'll recall that we started our understanding of the, the um, realignment of the business of the division um, by ensuring that we understand the nature of the diseases we have to um, confront. And therefore, um, I'm going to share with you um, how we continue to build on that. Um, yesterday, um, in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, with their support, and through a webinar to build the capacity of our researchers, more particularly the persons who are in our research ethics committee, and of course other persons participated yesterday to get an understanding of ProEthos, which is a software to enable us to conduct the um, research or to support our research efforts. And that um, occurred yesterday. Our expectation is that um, our own division will take that on board as we build our research um, capability. Um, just continue on that. Um, through the combined efforts of the, the THA, TRHA, uh, Rutgers, and WashU, Washington State um, School of Medicine, um, we soon to start um, this first ever epidemiological study of breast cancer in Tobago. Um, we expect coming out of that, we'll better understand this condition and to reduce the burden in our Tobago population. Just to share what is expected to happen shortly, um, let me just share the title of the study is Molecular Epidemiology of Breast Cancer in Tobago, Identifying Challenges and Opportunities. The lead person for this study, um, one out of Rutgers, is Dr. Adana Lianos. The lead person out of WashU is a um, person out of, out of Tobago here as well, Dr. Wayne Warner, um, who is um, a PhD candidate and researcher. He is the lead person coming out of that university. The way we will proceed with the study, let me just say that um, it's of, of import to us because um, trained persons will be trained, or research assistants who are going to be part of this study will be trained. We have in fact been looking at persons who have a minimum of bachelor's degree or higher to support the study. Um, we expect that they having been trained will support the data collection in both our medical and pathology re reports, <coughs> sorry, records. Um, we expect as they abstract those, um, those um, data that um, we'll get a better sense as to what is happening. So apart from the training, we'll have the supervision of Dr. Lianos in Tobago. Um, and we, in terms of monitoring what is happening, we expect to have um, twice monthly meetings so we ensure that the work is progressing as planned. Um, we know that this, is, this particular study is new to us, but that um, we understand that to conduct the study, there are some concerns people may have. One, in terms of patients' privacy, and may I say that in terms of the study design, we are going to apply unique identifying numbers for those patients um, such that um, we can, so they only linked based on the numbers, therefore, so that names and all of that wouldn't form part of the, 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 um, the issue, thereby protecting the patient's privacy. This study is expected to last for 18 months, and um, we look forward to some new knowledge in terms of what is happening in our population. We expect as well the knowledge that we gain, we will share that with the media and other researchers so that we can um, all benefit. But most importantly, though, we expect that um, from some of the training that the professionals will benefit from, that that will build the cap capability across our division in terms of um, how we conduct these kinds of, of, of studies. We, we want to give the assurance as well in terms of the legal issues associated with that. Our own patient chart um, of rights in Trinidad and Tobago, that is an area that we are going to work closely with as well as the Data Protection Act, because we know people are going to be concerned in terms of legal issues, and we've taken note of that, ensuring that we do so within a legal framework. So that is, that is soon to start, I, I just shared, in terms of how we are going to be proceeding and what is to happen. The second item that I'm going to share with you as well is that of our family development. 
you will know that we have realigned our families to focus on, realigned our division to focus on family and therefore um, they, all our disadvantaged groups are part of our family. The one I'm going to be paying attention to today is that of the differently abled. Um, you will recall in June I brought a motion with respect to the need for inclusion of the differently abled in our society and in our, our island. And therefore, we feel that none should be left behind. We have since formed a committee for the differently abled. This is an overarching body um, represented on that body, <coughs> excuse me, are, are persons from the various groups on the island. Um, so we've done that. We've provided them with a space for their, their activities. And we have provided them with seed capital to outfit their space. But as we continue our planning sessions with them, the, the community has identified for us that there are challenges in locating persons to care for those children who and elders who are differently abled. And therefore, they've contributed to the design of a training program. And such training program commenced yesterday. And may I share with you the areas that um, this training program will last. It's a three-day program. It started yesterday and is going to end on the 26th, so the 24th to the 26th. And um, the areas that they will be focusing, they will be exposed to, um, will deal with communicating with the disabled persons. Um, they will deal with confidentiality, confidentiality and privacy, how we earn trust and build relationships with the differently abled, how we deal with, with difficult situations concerning them, how to encourage and challenge your charges mentally, how you encourage and challenge your charges physically. Um, they'll also be doing first aid and CPR. Um, those are just some of the areas that they will be exposed to. Um, prior to the start of this, this, this um, training, the, the overarching committee, they selected, they went, went through a, a period of um, application and determination of those persons who are most suitable for training to, to provide support to the differently abled. So they conducted much of the activities themselves with the support of the Office of the Administrator. So that um, those um, 23 persons, I think the number is, those persons are now in training. The expectation is that they will provide support to those children in need. We look forward to the completion of this um, this training for persons who are differently abled or persons with special needs. We're very grateful for the, the committee for the efforts in terms of ensuring that this happens. The third item I, I, I want to share with you is that of our, our REACH committee. You may know that um, we've been providing seed capital to small um, business persons such that if they have a, an, an idea that they want to pursue, especially one which is, which is going to empower them, one which is going to bring them out of the, the present state, we've been supporting them over the years. Um, and just today, we have, we have um, engaged in renewing the new period of their contract um, for the persons who are on the committee. As you know, the committee will oversee those requests for grants. The grants are of the order of $7,500. and. Um, persons continue to benefit from that soon. Before we end this fiscal year, we expect to have a distribution of those um, grants that have been approved to um, persons in our population. The fourth item I want to, to um, share with you is that of our collaboration with Children's Authority um, of Trinidad and Tobago and ourselves, um, <clears throat> consistent with the, the MOU, which is soon to be launched. We're doing some preparatory work and so that there is um, training and orientation for those people who already know um, in terms of process mapping, mapping of those services that are to be provided in Tobago. So that our team and the, the Children's Authority team are in session working out from the, from the, the, the point of when a person is identified as being at risk, that the removal, the assessment, the support by the health sector and the social sector, right through to when we provide them uh, a safe space for them to occupy. And so that is in train because we think that as the, the office is now um, available on the island, they, they, are now, they are now positioned here, the, the head office 
is, is the Tobago office is now open for business and part of what we're doing is ensuring that we get ready to support them in terms of the service that they continue to provide for the nation's children. In terms of the Children's Authority and persons want, wanting to or desiring to open nursery schools and small institutions like that, um, how, how are they into All right, so, so the, the first step is not the Children's Authority. You may recall that we establish a facilities review committee. Um, there's one for homes for the elderly and one for children. And so that committee falls on us. In fact, we have started, we have done two sessions already, um, sharing the information with those persons who are owners of homes um, and nurseries. And what we've been sharing with them is a process. How do you apply? What are the things you must consider? We have done two sessions already. So I think your first order of business is to approach the division, and you, we will share with you the relevant information in terms of that. Where the Children's Authority will come in in terms of ensuring that you meet the standards that we will share with you. So that um, apart from our facilities review that is local, the, from the national, sense, na national um, context, they will provide the, the um, the oversight as well, ensuring that that there's regulation, ensuring that you carry out all the the, the, the um, you meet all the standards, and um, that the children continue to be in a safe um, environment. So that's their role. But the first part is to approach the division because the the local committee um, is is um, is part of our our service. Um, and going back to some schools that had to closed temporarily because they did not meet the standard before. Could you say what? Which schools? Um, there were a couple of schools before, or homes, I should say, that did not meet the standard of the um, my, my information, authority. My information is, is a little different, um, that in terms of um, there was one, one home, one home that um, was given a notice, uh, like a censure in terms of closure. You know, and that who my understanding is that um, there has since been a fire at that location, um, and that um, the I suspect the Children's Authority will continue working with with them in terms of um, meeting the standards even when they reopen. Um, the others, um, like our facility, probation, the probation hostel, we are already licensed by the Children's Authority. Our next facility that's due to open, um, we are working on setting, making sure all the standards are in place so that we are ready with all of those when we open. The other homes that have some challenges, I know they have been visits by both our, our um, facilities review committee and the Children's Authority, um, pointing out areas that they might be deficient. And um, they were given the, the, the encouragement in terms of, of areas um, that they need to correct. I'd spoken to you earlier, previously about it, and I don't know if you have the information now, but it's basically to know what is the status of persons on the island who may be infected with HIV and AIDS? How are they progressing in terms of their care? You, you, you asked me a very um, a difficult question to answer. Um, and I'll tell you why, because um, first, when you, you asked me about the efficacy of the drugs that we are providing, um, which I can't give you as, as quickly, um, and then you, you, you're asking me today how, how our patients are. Let me just first see, um, say to you in terms of, of, of what has been done and how, how the question could be answered perhaps in that context. Um, understanding how important HIV, as other diseases are, we have put in place um, an oversight committee. As you have the NACC in Trinidad, we have the TACC in Tobago. That is, that is out of the office of the Chief Secretary, um, and he's expected to make those appointments shortly. Following that, what we have done is review what is happening as the health, at the Health Promotion Clinic. As recent as last week, we held a meeting to look at what is happening. Do we have the... the, the, the numbers of staff we required, with the skills that are necessary to ensure that that is happening. And so we have been doing some reviews and ensuring that we provide the support required for the staff. My understanding is that the drugs are available. However, for me to tell you about the efficacy of the particular drug for the particular patient requires some more um, of research into to determine. It's a little difficult to tell you um, what, what is happening with that. But what I can say is that we continue to to provide the support to those patients as, as the others to ensure that they can live a good quality of life. So the service is there, services are available, and we continue to, to work to improve. OK, 
Okay, thank you. Following up from what Betty Ann asked, mm -hmm. what I wanted to know is, are you aware of what the numbers are like in Tobago? in terms of cases, how many persons are infected? I've been treated. No, no, no. I could just say what those that have been treated. So, so because, because um, the data for everybody who is, who, who is um, affected by HIV and AIDS um, um, may not be available to us. And I'm, I'm saying that because persons being treated in Tobago may not be the, the number. But we are treating just a little over 300 at our clinic. But that um, I can't tell you for all of Tobago because they may not be treated here. They may be treated in Trinidad. Or they may be treated privately. Do you know. we have any deaths so far for the year in Tobago as a result of HIV and AIDS? Um, I, don't, I, w I want to be sure that I, I, I look at that closely before I can say that to you. But um, the, 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 the problem of, of, um, of HIV is not. Um, it is. It has been managed. Let me just say that. Um, that is the important thing. It's been managed by us and, and managed. Um, um, we could always improve, but we are working on that. But I can't tell you whether the persons persons would have died from that because there may be some opportunistic diseases that persons would die from. So that um, I would need to look at their data to see um, that they have from what they've died, so that I can share with you. Um, on the on the next occasion, I know that um, some months ago I read that the UN would have declared that um, somebody with a viral load of zero, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they they would pass on the virus. Um, those kind of, those kind of antiretroviral drugs that allow for that are they being offered to the infected patients here? Oh, I, can't, I can't correctly answer you. Um, I thought you were going to ask me about um, um, whether we are meeting the standards um, um, as, as, as prescribed, the things that we need to do. However, I can't, I can't tell you today whether the particular drug will give you that result or, or it, if it is giving that result, yes? You can't, you say you can't tell me. I cannot, I cannot okay. at this time tell you. But um, what I will undertake to do is that um, once somebody asks me something, I will pursue it and get the information for you. Okay. Yes? So, so can you tell me about the standards? All right. So I did indicate for you the, how we are providing the services now. So we have um, the, the a multidisciplinary approach to the delivery of care. And as, as you know, um, HIV is not just about the, the health condition, but all the social issues that we have to consider. And so we have tried to design a service. You may notice we call it a health promotion clinic um, and not, not anything else. It is done like that so that persons um, who are, uh, are not ill can present so that you can come and, and, and be exposed to um, wellness information while you're there. So part of the service provided has to do with your nutrition, your social support, as well as your medical support. So it's not just us pumping you up with drugs, but that we provide for you those so you know how you eat. Um, and, and all the other family support issues are considered as part of the mix. So, so we try to do that. Um, we, we, we do that because we, we know the stigma associated. We, we've tried to provide it within a different environment so that um, we do reduce the stigma that is associated with the condition that people seem to, seem to continue with, you know, so that you feel comfortable to come to the clinic and um, you, you won't know who is, who is um, affected or not because you will have healthy people at the clinic as well or persons with, with any other lifestyle disease may come to the clinic. So it's done like that to, to reduce the, 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 that kind of um, stigma associated. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assemblies Post-Executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending July 28, 2018.